Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, special interview. I'm Lee Beach, Associate Professor of Christian Ministry here at McMaster Divinity College. And today we're really glad to have uh, Dr. Uh, Jennifer McNutt from Wheaton College with us. Uh, she's been a participant at the conference here this week. And she's also the co-editor of the book, The People's Book, The Reformation and the Bible. And uh, that's a, a topic that is obviously uh, <laughs> uh, close to your heart and, yeah. your, and your research because um, that's also the topic you uh, came and addressed here at our conference uh, yeah. this week. So Jennifer, tell us a little bit maybe about uh, the, the Reformation in the Bible and, and uh, what it would be important for us to know about that. Yeah, well, there's so much to say <laughs> and you'll have to get my book to know all of it. <laughs> <Absolutely>. but, <laughs> but in my talk today, you know, I was, I was highlighting um, Luther, uh, something Luther says about what's happening with the Bible, that, something that he's trying to do with the Bible in the Reformation. And he says it in 1539 in his preface to the Wittenberg edition of his complete works. And um, he says that the Bible has been forgotten and hidden in the dust, basically. And um, and so that that quote is an important one because um, scholars are trying to sort of discern, you know, what it, you know, how much access do people have to the Bible before Luther? And then what happens to the Bible after Luther, too? And um, so one of the things I was trying to highlight is that he's not talking about Bible numbers. You know, when Luther uh, translates the New Testament into German, it's not the first German New Testament mm. uh, that Europe has. So, um, so he's doing something different. And I think when he's talking about it being sort of hidden, um, that he is... Um, He's really talking about the message, the the message of the gospel and recovering that message. Um, so I think that that's the first thing he's saying. But then I think he's also saying that he's recovering the Bible's place, um, uh, supreme place, you know, a pride, I like to say pride of place, mm -hmm. uh, that it should have in the life of the church and in the Christian life as well. Um, and so then, you know, I think it's interesting to see maybe some parallels as we enter into our mm -hmm. own um, culture today and as we um, think about, as you're saying, post-Christendom and what that means. Um, you know, maybe we feel like the Bible is being hidden, it's being forgotten, um, it's in the dust. And, uh, you know, so what can we gain in, in terms of understanding from from the past? Yeah, and that was one of the things that I really picked up from your presentation was in some ways, some of the um, challenges that the church face are new, of course, in every context, right. but they're old too, because <laughs> they're right. not, the, the church hasn't they're faced perennial some of these too. things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so um, there's lots of, uh, uh, of of wisdom for us to 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 cull from today uh, yeah. by looking back to that significant time in church history, the Reformation, where they were wrestling with some of the same things we are, just in a different context. That's and, right. and there's great wisdom there. Now you're also involved in some other research around yeah. uh, the Bible, some interesting mm -hmm. uh, stuff. And so tell us a little bit about that and 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 how that relates even to uh, to our context today. Yeah, I'm interested in I'm um, writing a book on the history of the French Bible. Bible. I'm interested in from the 16th century through the Enlightenment, um, actually ending in 1805, so mm -hmm. beginning in the 1530s and ending in 1805, it's kind of a long span. Uh, but, uh, you know, that Bible is so fascinating because um, the community for which it's intended is, is really struggling for 300 years off and on with persecution. Mm -hmm. um, there is really no authorized uh, version of the French Bible, and so the story is hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, we're talking about hidden Bibles, you know, Luther's bringing it out into the open, but the, the French people, Protestants, were often hiding their Bibles intentionally mm. in order to protect uh, God's Word from being confiscated, for example. And uh, so anyway, so it's, I think it's a, a very interesting story. You can look at the Bible and see it as a reflection of the community for which it's intended mm. um, and also see how the leaders of the church are seeking to shape those communities and often the communities they're scattered um, they might only have a Bible the uh, Bible smuggled into their church they might not have a pastor and so the Bible can really function as a way to provide like a cohesion to a, a movement that's really facing diaspora mm. um, 
so there's there's kind of lots of lessons to be learned. And one thing that I've, I've really discovered is how the clergy of Geneva are very active, it was beginning with Calvin, but very active in shaping the French Bible. And I think that they end up being the unofficial authorizers. <laughs> mm. So yeah. yeah, so there's, uh, uh, like we ta- said, there's always things that are happening in history yep. that uh, s- still echo forward into into the times that into we find ourselves. Yeah, I absolutely. know. So, you know, refugees, um, yeah. thinking about persecution, all those things, um, I think, yeah, resonate with, with some of the challenges our world and Christianity is facing today. Yeah, and, and, and even issues of diaspora and marginalization mm-hmm. that, uh, again, different for, in that French context, yep. but still realities that we, we wrestle with, too. That's right. So we look forward to that. Thank uh, you. To that work. <laughs> and uh, again, this book, uh, The People's Book, uh, The Reformation and the Bible, uh, our guest has been uh, Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer McNutt from Wheaton College. We really appreciate you being with us Thank today, Thank you Jennifer. so much. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>